Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the second set of uh, tutorials or lectures on Firebase. Uh, in, this, uh, in these tutorials, what we're going to talk about is Firestore. And the previous one we did is we talked about authentication, all right? So what I'm going to do in this first video, I'll show you how to set up security for your uh, the, the Firestore or database. And uh, in the next one, I'll show you how we insert, how we validate data, and then how we read data. Uh, hopefully, by the end of these lectures, you'll have a, a full list of uh, tutorials or lectures that help you access the Cloud Firestore. All right. So in the previous video, what we talked about, the previous uh, set of projects, we, we created a project called Firebase Demo Project, just to review what we did. And then we set up the authentication. We talked about, you know, we set up the authentications and we talked about when you authenticate, when you create a user, you only have limited amount of information that you create. Uh, for example, in this case, it was only uh, the uh, email identifier and, uh, and then the password. And uh, the system or Firebase actually create for us a unique identifier called uh, UIID, okay? But what if we want to create additional information? In that case, we'll have to create another table called or another uh, collection, and then that would uh, uh, we have more flexibility there where we can create a lot more fields. Okay, so let me just show you how to enable. Uh, I already enabled it here, so I'm going to go to another uh, project, create another project, and show you the steps that you do to create enable project in uh, enable Firestore in your project. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, you go to your let's say go back to Firebase. I'm going to create another project. It, now you can continue on the previous project. You don't need to create another project. I'm just going to show you this step because I already did it. You're going to miss this step. So. Uh, let's say test project, database project. Okay. Uh, and then you click on, we're not going to use, then we click continue. We're not going to use analytics for now, and then create the project. <clears throat> and then we wait until uh, we get the, uh, it sets up the project. Let me just show you what we did in the uh, in the uh, in the Xcode project. What we did last time. So we had the project. In that project, we have uh, the uh, uh, we have a view controller, a navigation controller, and then we have um, a main menu, if you will. And you click on it, it takes you here, and then we were able to do register, log in, and log out. And then we have a message that may be displayed. Okay. Um, and there are these are information about the user. What if you want more? You can add more, of course. All right. And so that's what we did. And in the view controller, we did we uh, we created a function for registration. We created a function for login. We listened. To, we did a function. We created a function for log out, and we listened for any changes in the user status if they appear or disappear. Okay. I mean, if they sign in or sign out. All right, that's what we did last time. Let's go back to that uh, Firebase and see if that project is done. Yes, so continue. So I'm in the project. Now we did last time, we did authentication. Here's you can do add, uh, the, then you can use the method authentication and you sign in. we selected this, we enabled the user ID. We want that, okay, and then we click on save. So that's what we did last in the last series of video. Now about the database. So let's assume I want to create a table or a collection that contains a lot more information about, uh, about the, our user. So what do you do? You click on the database tab. In the database, you have two options. You have the real-time database, or you can use the cloud store. Okay, and this is the latest one. It'll give you a lot more powerful tool uh, functions and features. So I'm gonna use the create database using the cloud store. And this is the first step it allows you to do. It says, how do you wanna secure your database? Do you want to start in production mode? That means nobody have access to your data. Or do you wanna start in a test mode? 
in the beginning, I'm just going to show you this part. And then later on, we want to modify these databases. We modify these rules to make it fit your name. All right, so that's the focus of this video. How do you set up the database, which we did? Then how do you set up the security in your database to allow that you can customize the security based on your name, okay? So if we say test on, start with this test mode, and then we click on next, and I'll show you what happens with this. Okay, and then you select uh, the, the zone or the cloud region. So you can select different one of these, but the thing is that once you select one of these, depending on your area, then you cannot change it. Okay, so that's your location. And if you think about these, this is like cloud, you know, it's very similar to AWS cloud services where you create buckets to store information. All right, so we click on done. And then uh, we wait a little bit. And then we go to the database. <laughs> While we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Hopefully we'll be done here quickly. All right, come on. Okay, so it's done. So you need to understand uh, what is a database here? What's the database on the cloud? Uh, first of all, these databases in the cloud, they're not any, they're not very, they're not similar to your uh, uh, relational databases such as MySQL, SQL Server, uh, Oracle, any of that stuff. This is, the, these databases, they're called like, uh, they're called uh, uh, none, non-SQL or no SQL database. So it really doesn't use SQL. So what does it use to query the data and what does it use to store the data? So to store the data, you have something called collections. And inside that collections, you have documents, all right? So if I wanna start, start new collections, so if I say collection, let's say users, and then click on next, so now I have created a collection. So if I say I want to create user ID, and then I'm gonna call it a string, a, you know, user one, two, three. Then we click on add, then we click on another field, username, and then we call it uh, Ali, and then we click on user phone. Then I can select um, the put different values. And if you want to put uh, user address, you can put more value, for example, one, two, three, um, by Meredith. Okay. And then you click on save. So what happens here? Now the document ID is important. I'm gonna put a document ID here. Let's say user, user one, two, three. Okay. So what happens now? When you click on save, you have a collection, this collection called users. And inside that collection, you have documents. So the document that I'm looking at right now is called user123. Why? Because I put the name 123. And this is important for later on. I'll show you what that means. And then the fields inside that document or the attributes inside that document are the following. So it's not like your relational database where you have to have a structured database, a structured table and rows, and you can't change the rows. You can't change the record. And you know, you know if you change the record, you have to change all the entire record. No you have actually a document and this document consists of uh, key value pairs. So key value pairs. So each document can be different. Obviously that can cause a problem, but you don't want to do that. I mean, it, it, we'd like to be consistent. So we, people don't add extra fields or delete needed fields without, you know, without paying attention. All right. So that's important. So the path for this, the path for this, document is users slash user one, two, three. 
and that's how you can retrieve a particular document in your table or right, in your collection so if we have another user one two three four for example then what you do is that you uh, will have to say use user slash user one two three four and that will give you uh, the, uh, the values for user one two three four all right so that is the basics of the database and the firestore it's made of collection made of documents and the documents are basically json objects key value pair you can have nested documents if you want right now we're not going to talk about that you can add a new collection within it right so for example if they add if you want to add the address you can say add a collection and you call it an address inside that address you can have a city a building name a flat number a city zip code whatever all right but you can, you can do that and then you can go multiple multiple level but again you want to flatten your data you don't want to go multiple level because what if you want you know if you want to get if basically what happens is that if you want to get the information we'll get everything with it and you don't want to do that okay all right so what do we do here next okay now we need to look at these rules so if i look at the rules and then it says here this is the one that came with us and then you need to understand what this means so the rule says that this is the version id i'm going to this is service cloud services i'm going to match the database and this is the name of your database and any documents inside that database and here's the document okay so this is a variable again called this is what happens with these when you see it between bracket it becomes like a variable name with the, that contains the document name say i'm gonna say i'm gonna allow wildcard all documents i'm gonna allow them to read write if the request time is less than the following date all right so that is just to safeguard you from keeping your database open all right so that's the generic that's generic um, you say i'm going to give access to everything in my database what if you say i don't want to give everything i don't want to get access to everybody in this database i'm going to allow read that right to all documents uh, if I say if I say if true, what happens now? Actually, anybody can access your database and will be a, uh, can allow is allowed to write and read and write to this database. So that is not probably a good idea, right? Because you don't want to do that. What if we want to say a different rule, all right? And then obviously when you save these, if you say, look what happened. So now when I say publish, now I have two versions of these, all right? I have this one that was the first one, and this one, this one that I just created. So we were only we have only one available. We don't have any, we don't have a lot of uh, a lot of the we don't have uh, multiple versions uh, activated at the same time. Okay, so what if I want to modify this guy? Okay, so let's read this. The rules allow you anyone to internet, edit, delete all the data, blah, 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 of using, okay, make sure to write security rules for your application and, and that the time, okay. So what, what, this is, we don't need this, but basically this is a warning, you know, for us, okay. What if I want to add another rule? Okay, I'm going to say I'm going to modify this rule. Says I'm going to only allow users that have access that have registered within my application and have actually a user ID. How do we do that? All right. So I'm going to say same thing. I'm going to match this all documents. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to say allow <clears throat> read and write if request that authenticated remember this object from the previous lecture that user id and it's not equal to null now what happened now we're making it a little bit more secure to it to your database it means that you only allow plus uh, clients or uh, users to be able to write to your Firestore 
if they are actually registered in your system. If the user ID that comes to us is actually not null, meaning that they either registered or logged in, all right? That's what it means. So this will guarantee that not anybody can, uh, can uh, write documents, can write to your database, all right? So that is one of the basics, basic security uh, uh, functions that you will do in your database. Okay, so I only allow users that have access to that that have uh, that have res that are registered in our database. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much because the next videos I'm going to show you how to we actually write data to the database and how to change these rules to show you what happened with the, what kind of effect it will have on it, okay? All right, now because if I just talk about this, you're not gonna see the result. I wanna show you when we are actually writing to the database and we change these rules, what happens to the, what happens uh, uh, to our applications, all right? So that is uh, the first video, I don't, and uh, this just covers how to create the database, how to set it up, and to how to set up the basic rules, all right? So I'm gonna do publish this, and then the next one, I'm going to show you how to insert data from the iOS, from uh, Xcode, from your app into the database and how to manipulate these rules. Now, uh, notice here, you can actually do develop test. I haven't tried it, but I've been doing it through my app. You can try it in this, and I haven't tried this, so you can try it on your own, all right? That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.